as we are right now. And so God bless you guys. Thank you. Um, we're going to just keep going on in our series. You know, it was overwhelming the response we got last week from um, some of you all that wanted to serve. And, and I knew that was really encouraging because, you know, when, when you give a message like that and it's a difficult message and, and you receive it and say, okay, I want to find a place to serve. And so if we haven't got back to you about right where you can serve and what you can do, trust me, we're working on it because there was a lot of people that reached out online, on Facebook, coming up to us after service, and so thank you for that. We got plenty of things to do, as Pastor Michael was saying, especially talking about during the food bank, so we'll coordinate with you all um, to see where we can fit you in, and, and kind of what I'm talking about today is um, we'll help you kind of figure out where that right position is, and so I entitled this sermon, uh, I Hate My Job, <laughs> and I don't know if you've ever been in that place where you work somewhere and you hate it, right, um, because as we're talking about searching for significance, you know, you go through life and you go through seasons where, man, you just hate the place you're at, and you're just like, I just want to get out of here, and, and, and you don't want to miss out on God's significance in that season. Um, because of the work that we do, take up so much of our time, right? Like, when you are at work, 40, 50, 60 hours, some of us, we're there. And so if you don't find significance in the work you're actually doing, you know, it doesn't matter what you're doing outside of that, you will feel um, depressed and um, life will be difficult, and so I want to share about that. Um, so we turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 1, and we're going to read a lot of scripture, so I'll pray before we start, but how do you know that you're in a job that you're not called to, you're not supposed to be at, it's seasonal? Um, one thing I've realized is that you become what I call a, a clock watcher. Like, you'll be sitting at the desk, right? Or you'll be standing somewhere, and you look at the clock, and the clock moves slowly, right? It's like you're there, and it feels like you've been there for 10 hours, and it's been 10 minutes, <laughs> right? And I've had those jobs, man. I've had so many odd jobs, y'all. You can't believe it. But, but you know if you're a clock watcher, and you're doing something, and it just there's no passion, there's no uh, excitement, there's no joy, um, you might be in a place where you don't need to be. Um, and I grew up in a culture, in the Ethiopian culture, we have uh, four categories of uh, occupation uh, as you grow up. You can be a doctor, lawyer, engineer, or failure. <laughs> Right? Like, those are the, the four categories. In, the, in my culture, that's it. So if you're not in one of those categories, you're in there. And so a lot of my peers focus their time and energy in trying to do something that appeased their parents, their family, the culture, which would, they would pursue law, they would pursue medical school, they would pursue engineering, because they didn't want to be on the failure category. And they found themselves, after college, trying to work in a job where they became clock watchers. And they knew it wasn't what God had for them. It wasn't what they were called to. So, so let's talk about that today. So are you guys in Genesis chapter 1? Yeah. All right. We'll read a couple passages and we'll pray. It says in verse 27, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And let's go to Genesis chapter 2. Just turn the page. Verse 15, it says, Then the Lord God took the man and he put him in the garden of Eden to tend it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. Let's just pray. Uh, Father, we, we love you, God. Thank you for uh, this time of worship, refreshing time of worship today. Lord, thank you for allowing us to gather together as a family to hear your word, Lord. I thank you that we have the technology to broadcast this message all over the world so that your people can be encouraged and challenged, Father God. Lord, I pray that as I speak, as the ministry goes forth, Lord, that you use it, that you speak through it, Father God, as a spirit of many waters, that hearts are touched, people are encouraged and challenged. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So in Genesis, we see, number one, the, the purpose of work, okay? The purpose of work, the first thing we see is there is a level of fulfillment, right, that God wants us to get from the things that we do. 
It's not, uh, you know, it's not enough just to exist. When God created Adam, it says that he blessed him, right? He blessed him, and he put him, and he gave him work to do. It was part of his blessing. It was something that would bring fulfillment and energy and excitement to the life God had just given him. You were created to work, like if you have lungs, if you have breath in your lungs right now, God has something for you to do, and that is to bring you some level of fulfillment in this life. That's what the purpose of work is, is to bring some level of fulfillment. God wants you to get fulfillment from the things that you do in your day-to-day life. When God would work and he created on every day of creation, it says that he would look back over what he did and he said it was good. It was good. Why? Because what God did, he found fulfillment in. The things that God is asking us to do, the jobs that he is calling us to work, should give us some level of fulfillment. If you're not getting any level of fulfillment from what you're doing, you may want to think about, am I doing the right thing? Am I in the right place? Because whatever it is that you do, you should get some level of fulfillment. And it doesn't matter how old you are, God will give you something to do that will bring you some level of fulfillment. Our children's director, um, who was here before Tina, who um, has been retired for a long time, um, always found something for her, for God had given her something for her to do, and that was here to serve in children's ministry. And she had, she had found a job to do in the midst of her retirement, which she found tremendous fulfillment. She loved being the children's director. She loved working with the kids. And before we hired her on to do the work, She would there serving in children's ministry because that brought her some level of fulfillment. Just a few uh, um, weeks ago, she she left. I think she might still be here watching right now, but she wanted to go to San Antonio to take care of some of her family, so she was going to have to leave the position here as children's director and go and support her family in San Antonio and be there with them. And as she decided to leave and she got there, she found that the church ministry that her family was attending was looking for a children's director God will always give you something to do which will derive a level of fulfillment in your life because you were created and the purpose of work is to give you fulfillment you will, God will give you something you will find something that you can look back at and say man I've loved this I've enjoyed this this, is, this has been a joy for me God wants us to get fulfillment for what we do, because when you're doing that thing, you're not a clock watcher. It, it, it doesn't matter how much time passes by. It doesn't matter if you get paid or if you don't get paid. The fact that you love what you do is the reward of work, amen? God wants us to get fulfillment from our job, and if you're in a job that you don't get any fulfillment from, it might be time to think about where you're at. But the second thing that God told Adam to do was He blessed him, he put him in the garden, he says, this is what you get to do, you're going to enjoy this, but now you also have to work with your hands so that you can eat. It's not enough for the purpose of work just for us to get fulfillment, B, we also have to make a living. Whatever it is that you are doing, you have to do to make a living with it, right? Like, we just, we just can't exist just to do stuff that we enjoy doing. At some point, it has to translate to what I do is how I eat, <laughs> right? And if, and, if, and if I don't do, I don't eat because that's what God told Adam in the garden. He says, from the things that you cultivate with your hands is where you will be able to eat from. Paul gave us an example of that in 1 Thessalonians 4, 11 to 12. He says, And make this your ambition, to lead a quiet life. You should mind your own business. Okay, that's a word for somebody right now. We're going to leave that for another sermon. He said, You should mind your own business and work with your hands, just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders, and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. God says, listen, man, I want you to enjoy what you do. I want you to be fulfilled by what you do, but you also have to work with your hands to eat. And right now, I think in this pandemic, it's a weird time. I was talking to my brother. We had a a family barbecue yesterday, and we were talking about this uh, life unemployment. Because of the pandemic, so many people lost their jobs, and and some of them in my family were were that. And, and, And he's been able to eat 
because of unemployment checks coming in and they're doing all right but it's awkward it doesn't feel right like you're sitting at home and you're not working but you're eating there's a there's an unnatural feeling to where you're able to live off somebody else's work where you haven't been working for yourself and if you know that and if you've ever been out of work or couldn't work for a while and someone else was taking care of you you know that feeling that it's just i'm not created for that at some point, I have to work and to do something so that I can benefit and eat based on the hands, the work that I do with my hands. Because that's what we were created for. That's what God blessed. And God will always give us something to do that would bring us fulfillment, that also will make, help us make a living. Now, like I told you guys earlier, I've worked a lot of odd jobs in my life, um, tons of odd jobs. And... When you're going through life, the job you're doing to make a living may not be the job you do to get fulfillment. Sometimes you have to work those things until you arrive at where you need to be. Our first family vacation in, in Stillwater, Oklahoma, my family, we took a Greyhound to Seattle, Washington to visit some family and to enjoy what Seattle, Seattle had to offer. And I remember my first experience on a Greyhound, and if you've ever been on a Greyhound for a long period of time, it's multiple days <laughs> that you're on this bus and you make so many pit stops, right? Like, like you're stopping at gas stations, you're taking bathroom breaks, you're taking lunch breaks, dinner breaks. And so I just remember being on this bus and every time we would take a pit stop, I would ask like, are we there yet? <laughs> have, have we arrived? And, and the bus guy would be like, you guys have 30 minutes. You have an hour. Then you got to get back on the bus because we haven't reached our destination yet. You see, some of us have stopped at a pit stop in life and made it a pit stay, where God was saying, no, you're only supposed to be here for 30 minutes. This is just a college internship. This is only for a moment. But you decide, I'm just going to stay here and do this. And you've been doing that for years, and you missed the bus. You see, we all have to do things on the way to arrive to what God has for us, but it's a pit stop. It's not a pit stay. God has something for you that, one, brings you fulfillment, and two, can help you make a living, but up until you get to that point, there's a lot of pit stops on the way where you're here for a season, and maybe this is a place where you're just eating lunch, and, and you got to understand times and seasons in your life where you, you may just be in this to learn something. You may be in here just to meet someone, to network with someone, but, but there's a level of significance that God has for us in every season of our life. The purpose of work, one, should bring us fulfillment, two, should make a, a living, but we don't arrive there overnight. Sometimes we will take so many pit stops on the way to getting to that sweet spot. That I call it the purpose package, right? Like, what does God have for me? And, and, you know, where am I coming most alive? And with this purpose package, I think there's a few elements in it. One, what do you value? What's your personality, skills and giftings, and your passion? Now, throughout your life, you'll be developing these things. You'll be adding on to them like chinks of armor that you will get from, from one thing. You'll learn this from another thing. You'll learn this from another thing. But on your way to finding what God has for you, the place of significance that you thrive in, you need to find out what do I value most? Do I value autonomy? Do I want to work by myself? <laughs> do, do I like working with groups and teams? Is that where I really thrive? Like, like do I like working from home? Or, or, or do I want to be in an office? And there are some things you just have to experience to learn. What are your values? What, what do you want to get out of what you're doing? What are your skills and your gifting? What do you enjoy? What, is, what comes naturally? Right? Like what are the things that you step in and you're like, man, I love doing this. This is easy. What are you passionate about? What wakes you up in the morning and say, man, I'm excited about this? I could watch this all day. I could read about this all day. I just picked up, um, during this quarantine time, I picked up a few courses on uh, computer programming and coding. And in and, uh, and like three or four months, I learned how to develop um, uh, iOS apps and, and different stuff like that. And so I've been messing around. And I didn't realize that I actually like doing some of this stuff. And so I've been developing this app that I'm really passionate about. One day I'll tell you guys about it when it's done. But 
midnight, one o'clock, I'm on my computer in our bed, and it says there, like, David, we're going to have to set some boundaries. <laughs> right? Like, you're on your computer all day. You're coding. You're watching YouTube videos. You're doing this. And I didn't even realize I was passionate about this until I started learning about it. And before you know it, it's something that I love to do. See, you're never too young and you're never too old to find a new passion and a new love and a new skill and sometimes as you're learning to do it you realize man I really like doing this what are you passionate about if you don't know what you're passionate about go try some things go learn some things go experiment experiment with some things to say do I like this do I not like this that's what we were talking about serving in the church it's like sometimes when you're serving here you got to really find what it is you like doing what you're passionate about so you can take ownership of it what do, you, what do you enjoy? What are you passionate about? What are your skills and gifts? What come naturally? What fit with your personality? Because when you discover this on your journey, on your long greyhound bus to your destination, right, at some point you will find the thing that brings you the most fulfillment that will allow you to make a living. Amen? It's the purpose of work. You guys still with me? Number two, the, the nature of work God tells us in Genesis chapter 3. So chapter 1, he blesses us. Chapter 2, he tells us what we need to be doing. And chapter 3, he tells us what it's all about. The nature of work. Work is hard. <laughs> I'll just end it right there. Genesis chapter 3, 17. Is it to Adam, he said, because you listened to your wife and ate the fruit from the tree. Now, I, I know we're stopping at all these places. But guys, 99% of the time, listen to your wife. <laughs> 99.9% .9 men listen to your wife. It was the one time, Adam, you weren't supposed to listen to your wife. You, you messed it up, bro. Because you listened to your wife and you ate from the fruit, the fruit from the tree in which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat from the food from, all, from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground. From since that was where you were taken from the dust you are, and from the dust you will return. What is God telling him? Listen, not only is work a blessing because you get fulfillment, bless, work is also cursed. It's not a curse, it's cursed. It is a blessing, but it is cursed. The curse is it's going to be difficult. It's going to be, it's going to be hard. You're, you're going to work at it. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be, you can be doing the, the very thing God has called you to do, the place you're supposed to be doing it with the people you're supposed to be doing it, fitting your perfect passion, your gifting, your skills and personality. Don't think it's not going to be difficult because the nature of work is work is hard. So I don't want you to think because what you're doing or where you're at, it's difficult that you don't have significance or you're not where you're supposed to be or you're on your journey to the right place because God has told us the nature of work is hard and you've been to those jobs where it's just like, man, it's so hard to see fruit in what I'm doing. I'm working, I'm working day in, day out, and just, things just don't get done. I start businesses and they fail. Let me tell you, keep pressing because the nature of work is it's difficult. You will have failures, you will have um, bad bosses, you will experience hardship, but we know that the nature of work is difficult. People make excuses for their work and their employment because it's hard. Um, there's an illustration that goes like this. It says, we all know of, of a wishbone who spends their time wishing someone else would do the work uh, there's the jawbone who do all the talking but very little else. There's the knuckle bones who knock everything that anyone else tries to do. And then there's the backbone who shoulders the load and actually does the work. When you think about the different bones in your body, it could be a wishbone, it could be a knuckle bone, but you want to be a backbone. You want to be a backbone. Wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, because the nature of work is always going to be difficult. And because it's hard, 
it can't be the excuse of why you leave or you quit or you get out or you cut and quit early. That can't be the reason. Any of the other reasons, I just don't get fulfillment. It doesn't share your values. It's not where you're supposed to be. It's only a season. But because it's hard, it's not the right reason because we know by nature work is supposed to be difficult. And so if you hate your job because it's hard, you need to change your definition of the difficulty of work because all work is difficult. It doesn't matter where you go, what company you work for, what career you're in, you will not experience a level of thorns and thistles where you have to work and there's pain, there's frustration. So be encouraged. If this, the only problem you have is it's hard, you're in a good place. You're in a good place. The purpose of work, our third point, the purpose of work. It's its worship. Let me read Colossians 3, 23 to 20, 24 for you real quick. Because we know work is difficult. Whatever you do, work at it as if with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ, Jesus, you are serving. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. Because we know that work is difficult. We know that it's, it's tedious and it's frustrating. But do it with all your heart because the person you're serving, the one you're actually working for is Jesus Christ because the result of work, our third point, is that work is worship. Work is worship. Actually, in the Hebrew, the word is avodah which translates work and worship as the exact same thing. They're interchangeable because when you are doing what God has called you to do, you are experiencing, expressing your worship and giving it back to God as a blessing to him. You say, thank you, God, for giving me something to do. I'm going to do this with all my heart because my work is worship. It's worship unto you. Can you imagine Adam and Eve didn't need Jonathan and April to lead them into worship? They worshiped the Lord every time, every time they, 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 they uh, t took some fruit from the tree, every time they tended it, every time they cultivated it, they were sending that back to the Lord saying, thank you for creating me for a job that brings me fulfillment. And when I do it with all my heart, because it's not just what I do, it's how I do it, that when I do it with everything, it's worship back to the Lord. Work is worship. And for some of us that are frustrated, with where we're at, with the jobs we have, and you're that person where you think, man, I hate my job. You want to create an altar of worship with where you are. I mean, create an altar unto the Lord that when you go in, this is a place where you worship Him because it reflects His character in how you work. It reflects Him. You see, we have to stop divorcing our work from our worship. Instead, be defined by it. We have to stop divorcing our spiritual life from our secular world instead of being defined by it. Do you see? It all works together. We have to stop compartmentalizing. This is what I do to my nine to five, and this is when I worship Jesus. This is what I do with my friends, and this is what I do. You know, stop compartmentalizing your life. It is all one life, and it's all an act of worship. That when you work well, you worship well. Because whatever season you're in, whatever pit stop you're at, if you do it well, God will bless it and bring you fulfillment. Think about Joseph. You see, Joseph had a pit stop. But because he got out of the pit, it wasn't a pit stay. And he went to another pit stop with Potiphar. And it says because he worked well, that he worshiped God well in the house because of his work ethic and how well, the character of his life. It says that God blessed Potiphar on behalf of Joseph's sake. What if God wants to bless where you're at for your sake? Just because you're there, that place is going to be blessed because you carry with you a worship and an attitude that says, what I do, I do it with all my heart because I'm doing it as unto the Lord because my work is my worship. We have to stop divorcing that. Amen. You guys with me? When you make worship the result of your work, God will bless it. I'm going to ask the worship team to come on up. Finding fulfillment in the things that we do, in the jobs that we work, in the, in the situations we're in, 
has to do with our perspective. Because significance is feeling a sense of value and worth. Wherever you are, you just feel valuable. And I love this song that the worship team played. It was the last song. It says, I'm not alone. I'm not alone. And sometimes we miss out on significance because so many of the things we go through day in and day out, we feel like we're alone. We feel like we're working and there's no result. We feel like it's not fruitful. We feel like God is not there with us. But I'll just tell you this. When you choose to worship God in those places, it invites his presence into that space and you won't feel alone anymore. When you choose to look at where you're going in as a nine to five, it doesn't matter where it is, where you work, what, 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 whatever it is you think you're gonna be doing, that that is an act of worship for you. You will find fulfillment. Because at some point, in some time, later down the line, you will get to your Seattle. <laughs> you will get to that place, that destination where you were meant to get to. But until then, you're in a pit stop. And that pit stop has significance. It has meaning. If we think about it that I hate what I do, I hate my job, I just can't wait to get out of here, you'll find yourself stuck there, stuck in a rut for much longer than you're supposed to. Oftentimes, God has a lesson for us in the season. He has something for us to get, to receive, and when you get that, then you can get back on the bus and keep going. Learn the lesson God has for you where you're at and move forward. You don't have to be in a place where you hate your job. Another thing you can do if you're in a place where you're just frustrated is find a way to serve, like we talked about last week, and find fulfillment in serving God. Because if the job that you're doing isn't bringing you fulfillment, Find something else you can do as a hobby that you enjoy, that you can get fulfillment from. Because if you get good enough at that one day, someone will pay you to do it. Someone will pay you to do it. I mean, that, that's how businesses start. Get good enough at your passion. There's a difference between people that are passionate about what they do and people that just do it for money. Because when things get difficult, the people that just do it for money quit early, but the people that are passionate about their work, they can endure the test of time, they can endure the test of difficulty, and the test of frustration. You don't have to be in a place where you hate your job. You just don't have to. You can always make changes in your life to where you're in a place where you find fulfillment and worship. Amen? Man, let's stand together, let's pray, and the worship team is going to take us um, into just the presence of the Lord a little bit more. Father, we love you, God. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your goodness. I thank you, Lord, that you want us to worship you. You want us to engage with you, to connect with you, to talk to you, Lord. Because those are the times where we find significance, where we find tremendous significance in the things that we do and the reason we do them. Lord, I pray for your, your kids, Lord, your people, that if they're in a place where they're frustrated and they're not finding fulfillment, Lord, that you show them the lesson that they need to learn, the things they need to get out of this season before they move on to the next. Lord, I pray that you give them the passion you help them to find what it is that makes them come alive. Because when they do what you've called them to do, they worship you wholeheartedly. Lord, I just pray that they, they come to find that place, that purpose package, where their skills and their passion and their gifting and the opportunity all mash together for them. Lord, thank you. Just speak to your kids right now, Father God. In Jesus' name. Thank you.